You want to be able to use concrete language. And we want to explain what those words mean. Like we say, if they haven't been at church before, they've never heard these words. So, you know, knowing ahead of time how to explain these words to children will help the leaders not get twisted when we start sharing the gospel. So here would be some examples of confusing churchy words. So sin, things that don't please God. We could describe it as missing the target. We could also say it's to disobey. Of those, what do you think you might tell a child? Or do you have something different? Put it in the chat and let's see what we have. Barbara likes things that don't please God. Awesome. Okay, Nicole chimes in with the disobey. Patty says, um, doing or saying things that God doesn't like, that doesn't make God happy. And Melva says, anything that makes God sad. That's for young, for very young. And then, um, right. but if you have athletes, Barbara says, missing the target. Very true. Very true. Things we think, say, or do that goes against God's rules. So those are, those are all awesome responses. And we certainly know that that's certainly going to be a way that the kids are going to understand when we say sin. The next one would be admit. And I'm saying it means to own up to or to agree. You know, you say something like, oh, well, God didn't like that. That was not what God wanted you to do. You know, it's the child is going to respond like maybe, yeah, or no. So we want to just try to describe these churchy words to them in a different language to them. Um, believe is to know and trust that something is true. What do you think the one thing is that we're asking these kids to believe that's true? Share that in the chat. Yes, please. That Jesus is who he says he is. Right on. I love it. <laughs> Very good, Barbara. Yes. Jesus and God are the same. The resurrection. Mm -hmm. God loves you. Mm, loves all those responses. Yes. Great ones. Jesus wants what's best for his children. Awesome. That's a great one, Kylene. Great God, one. I love that. Jesus is our savior. Yes. Very good. Yep. God loves you always. That Jesus loves them even when we do wrong. Yep. Certainly. You guys are full of all great answers. That's awesome. So another confusing churchy word for kids would be confess. And simply, we want to be able to expel, explain to them that we're, we want them to tell us what, you know, what do you think, you know, why do you think you want to accept God? And why does God want us to accept him? You know, and that the fact is to confess, you want them to say what I've done wrong and that they realized that they had. Another example would be repent, meaning to turn or change from disobeying God. For a young child, that might be a little bit hard to understand. So what else could we tell a child repent meant? Can you put your answers in the chat? Go the other direction. I like it. <laughs> Telling God we're sorry. Very good. Change your mind. Yes. 
turn away from sin. You guys are coming up with some really fantastic answers. And I think it makes us think as children leaders, you know, more. And then if we were to say to them to give your heart to Jesus, you know, as I was studying this, I was envisioning a, a young child looking at you and saying, well, how can I take my heart out and give it to Jesus? You know, because they're thinking of the, the little sense, you know. So um, one way we could respond would be to say, would you like to trust Christ completely? And if they, they, you know, they don't understand that, certainly we want to go ahead and tell them, what do we, what exactly do you mean? Trust Christ completely. Just so they have that understanding of what we, what it is we're saying to them. Whoops. Sorry. All right. So. We want to share the Christ, Christ with God. And there's some little guidelines to help us with that. You want to deal with each child individually. One of the biggest things we want to avoid is those mass appeals that they make like in a worship service. If you see a child that wants to know more about it, pull them aside and talk to the child individually. Make sure they truly understand what did they just commit to. You know, what does it mean to be a, a Christian? What does it mean to repent and confess? Um, we want to be conversational with the kids. One of the things, especially with the younger crowd, sit next to the child. Don't stand over them. Sometimes, you know, the kid may clam up and not want to share anything with you because here's this giant standing next to me. Now, what do I say to them? You know, so we want to put the child at, at as ease as much as we can. So you want to be conversational, sit next to them, don't stand over them, and then ask open-ended questions. Why? Because the open-ended questions invite uh, conversation. Could you guys maybe give me an example of what would be like an open-ended question for kids? What do you think we, you could say to them that would be an open-ended question? Maybe jot something in the chat for us. Especially when you're sharing the gospel, what would be an open-ended question? I like that. I really do. So Melva says, I think I know why you came to see me, but could you tell me why you did? Right. Getting them to tell you in your own words. Yeah. How are you feeling right now? That's a great open-ended question. Tell me about yourself. Another open-ended question. How do you think you can tell others about Jesus? In what ways could we be good friends? Very good. So underscore an open question, open-ended question is a what? For maybe people that haven't figured out what an open-ended question is. It's going to be having the, making them give you an answer. You have to have a conversation with them. That's you know, right. You want to avoid the, what they call closed questions, because all you're going to get for an answer for a closed question is yes or no. And then the other could be um, type of question could be limited. They can only be answering it. They want to answer it with the correct answer. So definitely putting the kid at ease and asking them the open-ended questions, you know, exactly. Do you understand what it means to be, you know, say, do you understand what baptism is? You know, getting them to answer those questions and not say yes or no to them makes a big difference. I would say the next thing is use a Bible. You know, if the child has a Bible with them, I would use their Bible and let them read the verse from the Bible. 
This way here, they can go home and they can relook at it again. But if they don't, you want to open a Bible and let them read it from the Bible. You don't want to sit there and just say, well, this verse says this. We want them to see exactly where it comes from and what exactly the verse says. Doing that, it, it's going to let them know that they can, un, they can believe it. And then you want to present the gospel on a child's level. We want to be very careful to explain to them that words that they might not fully understand. You know, and yeah, ask them the open-ended question. Do you understand what that means? You know, let them answer you and say yes, and then you can go from there and help them have a better understanding of what the word, the questions are and what the meaning is. You want to determine the spiritual gift condition of the child. You know, you could ask the child, they may not be ready. They may come up and say, yes, I'm ready. They may say, I'm not sure. When that happens, we want to reassure the child that, you know, God's at work in their life. God's there with them. And um, most importantly, we want to make sure we do a follow-up with the kids so that, um, you know, if they have any questions or they're confused about anything, we can certainly answer that for them. And, you know, talk, talk with their parents. You know, this way here, the parents can follow up with them and they can consider, consider the conversation, you know, continuing the conversation with the kids. Um, certainly a parent will certainly determine the condition of the spiritual condition of the child. And they may very well tell you, I don't think he's ready yet. And, you know, we say, good, yes, yeah, they would know. They certainly would know. Um, leading a child to make the appropriate decision. It's okay if they say no. They may not be ready, like I just said. You know, parents will know, too, if we ask them and they say, well, I'm not really sure. Or, you know, they may follow with their friends. They may feel the peer pressure. Well, it looks like fun. That's why I want to be baptized, you know, so we want to make sure that they, they know they are making the right decision and they are ready. And of course, we want to fully, fully rely on the Holy Spirit. If the child's restless and they're not responding to our questions, you know, relax, just in charge, encourage the child that God is working in their life. And they'll know when the time is right. Help the child understand what the Bible says about being saved. You know, if you believe and confess, you will be saved. It's a simple response that we have for God's plan. So now I... Um, had asked Sandy to join in and share the levels of biblical learning with us. Okay, so Alice is going to stop sharing her screen and I'm going to share my screen. So yeah, I want to say a little bit about the levels of biblical learning. Has anybody in the heard of this concept of the level levels of biblical learning? And I hope you have, because I believe, great. Oh, good, good, good. You've heard of it. So what the biblical levels of learning, it helps all of us as teachers of preschoolers all the way to high school to understand the foundational truths of what the kids will understand when it comes to things like um, uh, and I'm, I, this is the resource called Ages and Stages. So if you've never heard of the biblical levels of learning, you can get it free from LifeWay. And we're going to send you the link uh, for LifeWay, um, but you can buy them in packs of 10, especially if you are the, the VBS leader. Uh, this is a great um tool that you can give to every single one of your teachers because it really will help them to understand their 
particular age group. Um, and I think that's so important. And if the more tools you can put in their hands, the better. But like I said, you can get it free um, on the LifeWay website and you can download PDFs for each age group if you want. Um, and again, that would be a great gift to give to your uh, teachers. So the biblical levels of learning, again, as I said, these are these foundational truths uh, that children um, should understand at the different uh, ages uh, in their spiritual development. And the 10 levels, the 10 areas uh, that are covered in the biblical le levels of learning are these God, the Bible, people, church, family, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, creation, salvation, community, and the world. And so all of these topics, um, all of these um, issues are covered in the biblical levels of learning. And you can see exactly what your child will understand about, um, uh, you know, uh, about those areas at a particular age. And here's the book, it's called Ages and Stages. And every single page has um, the information about for that, for the child. So you can see that I'm holding up. So for example, um, if you have a, um, a younger preschooler, and I, you, I usually work with those myself, when they're thinking about salvation, Okay, when they're thinking about salvation, there are only two principles that children that are preschoolers, younger preschoolers would understand in the area of salvation. And those are God is love and God cares about us. And those are the things that as teachers of younger preschoolers, that's what we should be honing in on if we're going to talk to our children about salvation. Now, if you look in the book and you go up to younger kids and you want to talk about salvation, then in the book, it talks about how God provided the way for people to become Christians. You know, that's, again, a concept that younger kids can understand. Um, God sent his only son, Jesus, to be the only savior to the world. Sin is choosing my way and disobeying God. So you can see that they're, they're in this book, there it'll lead you into the progression so you can understand where your kids are when it comes to any of these topics that you see on the screen. But I want to hone in on um, the biblical levels of learning when it comes to talking about the gospel with kids. So what I did is I took my ages and stages book and I kind of, I lifted some principles out um, for some of the, some of the areas in the biblical level, levels of learning. So for example, if you want to talk to the kids about God, um, they'll understand that because, because God loves us and created us, he gave. So when you're thinking about sharing the gospel with kids, they need to understand the principle of the fact that God does love them, that he created us, but that he gave us something. And so, um, and then that begs into that, the next area is Jesus, that God gave us what? God gave us Jesus, which is his only son. And what did he give? What did Jesus give? He gave his life for us. And again, these are all concepts and words that kids can understand. You know, Alice said it right at the beginning. We have to be careful of not using those churchy words. And I love the biblical levels of learning because it really hones in on the wording of how we should approach kids when it comes to sharing the gospel. So we go from sharing, uh, uh, you know, talking about God, talking about Jesus. Then we talk about this idea of sin and how sin separates us from God. And when I talk to kids about sin, sometimes Sometimes I just use the word, you know, I messed up. You know, when I think of, of, of sinning, it's I messed up. And sometimes kids can understand. I messed up today. I remember a kid always used to come, oh, I messed up today, Mrs. C. You wouldn't believe what I did today. And, you know, and, 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 and so when I would talk to him about sin, you know, that's his language. So I needed to to share it from his perspective, his language. And that's why when we're talking to kids about sin, I love the person in the chat who talked about if you're talking to an athlete, they understand when we're missing the mark. 
And so, you know, when you're, so when you're talking to kids, you talk to them at their own level, but reminding them that when we mess up, it separates us from God. Or if when we miss the mark, we get separated from God. And so that's how you talk to kids um, about the gospel when it comes to um, sin. And then you come to people and you, and the kids need this whole idea of we can't fix it. We can't solve the problem, the sin problem. I messed up. And so kids need to know that all people need Jesus. All people need Jesus. And then when you talk about salvation, then we can talk about this gift that God gives us and, um, and have God in our life now and forever. He's the gift giver. He gives us the gift. And then discipleship, where we trust Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior. And that's another churchy word. Sometimes we use both of those churchy words, Lord and Savior. And it's funny, I, I had a, a kid in my class and we were talking about, I said, what do you think Lord means? And he said, he's the man. He the man, Mrs. C. He's the man, you know? And so, you know, kids have different um, words that they use to describe Jesus as Lord. Another one is um, he's the boss. You know, he's the one in charge. And so we need to find ways to connect with kids when it comes to, um, again, the words. When you think of the word savior, that's not a word kids hear all the time. But, you know, some words um, might be rescued. You know, Jesus is our rescuer. He saves us, you know, and so we have to begin to use words that they understand. And so that's where the biblical levels of learning can really help you um, to meet your kids at the exact place that they're at. So I would really um, suggest that if you have an opportunity, if you don't know the biblical levels of learning, get yourself a copy. Get yourself a copy or go on the LifeWay website and just download your age group. And I have to say, I use this all the time because I teach different uh, kids, uh, different levels of kids um, at different times. So I always like to refer to it. So it's always great. One of the things Alice also asked me to share is one of, one of my favorite or preferred ways of sharing the gospel with kids. And, and one of the ways that I like to share the gospel with kids is using um, this tool called the gospel god's plan for me alice is holding it up um, and i have a picture of it on the screen but you can purchase those um, through lifeway and i love it because you know alice also i think has a copy of the um the gospel guide um that you can use and it's and yeah she's got it yeah and it's uh one that you flip and that's a that's a neat thing to use and i've used that Yep, it goes into a cross, then flip it, Alice. Yep, flip it, see how it comes into a cross. Really? You have to be a kid to use that, though. <laughs> you have to be a kid to use that, right? Um, so anyway, I, I like that, too. So at Vacation Bible School, um, our church buys that, and certainly I would use that. But usually in my Sunday school class or if I'm doing a kids group or something like that, I gravitate toward this piece called the gospel God's plan for me. And um, one of the reasons I like it, it, it uses five different icons. And the first icon is this crown. And it reminds us that God rules. You know, he rules. He's the creator. He's the man, you know, and, um, and, and he's in charge. And, and then, you know, after we um, help kids understand, you know, that God's, that God rules, that God's the creator, that he's in charge, you know, then we can go into the next um, area and it's, go we sinned, you know, or we messed up, like I said, one of, one of my kids, and I love that, you know, I get that, that's sometimes exactly where kids are, I, I messed up, and so, um, and, and so it goes from God rules, we sinned, and then the next icon is that God provided. Yeah, we sinned. And it's something, as I said, back in the biblical levels of learning, we can't fix it. We can't solve the problem, but we know who can. And that's God because he provided because he loves us. 
You know, he loves the whole world, but he loves each one of us, each child. And again, I love that idea about Alice saying we need to, to hone in on those kids individually. And so God provided. And what did he provide? He provided a gift for us. He provided Jesus giving, you know, his own life for you and me. And then the last icon is um, the, these hands. They remind me of Grover. You ever, if you know who I'm talking about on uh, Big Bird, Sesame Street, sorry. It, those hands just remind me of Grover. Um, so we respond. So you go from, so, so I love it because it just, for me, just for me personally, it just really flows. Talking about how God rules, he's the creator. Then, then what happens, we, we messed up. But, but God loves us so much, he provides. And then he gives us this awesome gift. Who doesn't like gifts, right? He gives us this awesome gift of his one and only son. And then we respond. And that's when we can ask the kids those open-ended questions and, and helping them work through that whole thing. And so one of the things I was telling Alice about, what I did a couple of years ago with LifeWay's permission, is I created for myself these flashcards using the biblical levels of learning. So when I'm teaching, you know, I keep these in my bag and I can share the gospel with the kids with the biblical levels of learning. And I and on the front side, of course, this is what the kids will look like. And then but in the back, I got all the cheat notes right there for me right in the back. And so I laminated these cards. And if you want a copy, uh, we'll, we'll send them out as a resource. Let us know in the chat and we'll certainly put them out there for you. Um, but, you know, just love something like this. So, so that's a good little tool. And then I created these, which is a, um, uh, which is a, uh, a little keychain with the same icons on them. And I just pull them out of my bag. If I don't, you know, if I don't have the, um, the others, I just have them right on my keychain. And again, uh, they, there were five little cards with each of the little icons on them. And um, great little tool. And I can send you that. I developed this also so I could give to my VBS workers. Um, or when I'm sharing the gospel with people um, or doing different trainings, I use those. So I have to say, you know, I love this uh, booklet. This, the, 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 inside the booklet is the companion for all of these little icons. Um, and I have three little grandsons and my uh, and my um, oldest grandson, he hasn't given his life to Christ. But you know what? When we get together, he's so fascinated by my flashcards that he actually knows my flashcards and he can give me the gospel presentation. And, um, I, you know, I have broached it a couple of times about him being ready to ask Jesus into his heart. He says, I'm, I'm not, no, not me, Nani, not me. Um, but you know what? He knows the gospel presentation. And there's one day the Holy Spirit's going to grip his heart and he's going to be ready. Um, so it's just, it's, it's amazing the way God can use tools like that um, for your class. So hope that was helpful, Alice. Very much so. Thank you so much. You know, in addition to the tools that Sandy talked about, you know, some other examples could be like the Roman road, um, a witnessing bracelet. Kids like to do crafts and everything. You could have them make the little witnessing bracelet. You know, the ABCs of becoming a Christian is another good one. Um, I think if I'm not wrong, I think Melva Davison loves the wordless book. So, you know, there's so many resources out there if we just really pick into them and, you know, choose what's best. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good. Good. So how about any questions? Any questions in the chat there that you want clarified or um, any comments? What are, you know, what are some uh, tools that you like? Is there, other, is there another gospel tool that you like? Um, share that in the chat and we'll um, share it with other people. Um, I know a lot of times at VBS, we use the acronym ABC, admit, believe, and confess, right? So, um, you know, that's, you know, that's something uh, people use when they're sharing the gospel with children.